Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and it's time for another edition of Tom's Toolbox. And today I want to discuss with you service factor terminology as it relates to your AC motors. Why do we have it? What is it good for? Ha! What is it good for? Absolutely something. Let me tell you what it's all about here. This is for our good friends at Baldor. We got ourselves a Baldor motor right here. Now, as a motor user, you may be familiar with this topic, and it's been around for as long as the electric motor, but we want to examine this a little closer to see what it's really telling us, all right? So, NEMA, the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, states by definition, and I quote, the surface factor of an AC motor is a multiplier, which when applied to the rated horsepower, indicates a permissible horsepower loading, which may be carried under the conditions specified. When the voltage and frequency are maintained at the value specified on the nameplate, the motor may be overloaded up to the horsepower obtained by multiplying the rated horsepower by the service factor shown on the nameplate. A motor operating continuously at any service factor greater than one will have a reduced life expectancy compared to operating at its rated nameplate horsepower. Insulation life and bearing life are reduced by the service factor load. Now, an example of this would be a motor with a 1.0 service factor designed to provide 10 horsepower. Now, the motor cannot handle more than its nameplated 10 horsepower, while a 10 horsepower motor with a 1.15 service factor can handle up to 15% more horsepower demand beyond its nameplated rating, giving it a total capability of 11 and a half horsepower for intermittent duty. Now clearly service factor is defined in terms of continuous operation. And just as clearly, we're reminded that a motor operated at a service factor greater than one is not the same motor as before. And we're warned that any continuous operation at any service factor greater than one, it's gonna shorten the life of the motor. I mean, think of it this way. You're running, you got an arm full of boxes. All right, I'm running, pretend I got boxes. Okay, we add more boxes, what happens? you start to slow down and to overheat, right? Yeah, I mean, it's gonna get heavier. I mean, that's kind of obvious. So, why do we have a service factor at all? Well, it's because of the trade-offs provided by the relationships among a motor's thermal design, loading, and service life. Now, I want you to look at the reference table here that we have on this video. It shows us that the thermal aging of its insulation system from normal operation or due to overload will eventually cause the failure of even a properly supplied and properly maintained motor. The hotter a motor runs, the sooner it's gonna fail. On the other hand, this hand, the cooler a motor runs, the longer it may be expected to last. Hot, fail, cool, last, okay? For example, the relative life figure shown here is a fair indicator of the application latitude that is available to the motor user. A motor with a Class B insulation system has a given life expectancy that is halved for every 10 degrees above the reference point and doubled for every 10 degrees below the reference point. Thus, the user can trade some of that life expectancy for the option of being able to overload the motor depending on their needs. Now, with a proper understanding of the service factor, your application requirements and the environment, you can select the correct motor to get the job done without oversizing. All right, in summary, when a motor is continuously operated under nameplate conditions and at the nameplate service factor loading, the temperature rise of the motor will not exceed that allowed for the insulation system used or that of another insulation system as may be specified. Got it? Good. Hey. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Tom's Toolbox with assistance from our very good folks over at Baldor. Now we hope this will help you with your motor application. And uh, as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location and they'll be able to help you out. And as always, uh, make sure you wear your proper PPE for whatever the job calls for, okay? So in this case, you know, if we wanna work with motors, maybe we got our safety goggles on. Also, be sure to tune in for more of Tom's Toolbox videos with me, yours truly, as your host, and you can catch those on the Motion Industries YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching today.